Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Now, do you remember what I just got through talking about? Well, this is the story, and I'm going to read it to you because it is so intriguing. I love it. Please bear with me. You know, sometimes people don't have much interest in the Word of God, but some of these stories are real eye-openers if you just take your time and check them out. I'll never forget hearing this story. Okay, listen to this. This is Numbers. Remember I said I mispronounced the names? Oh, you'll see in a minute. I'm going to mispronounce them again, but at least they'll be a little more accurate. Numbers chapter 16, starting at verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, with the sons of Eliab, and On, and the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeking all the congregation. You know, we see that all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy. And he will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take ye senses, Korah and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord hath doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to him, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Iliad, which said, We will not come up. Mm. I'm scared of them. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Oh, they're fussing at Moses now. Moreover, thou has not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or giveth or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come. Hmm. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect thou not their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they, and Aaron tomorrow. Remember I said about the school after school? Yeah, meet me in the schoolyard. We'll see who's who, who's still standing. 
Okay, that's basically what that is. Now check this out. <laughs> and take every man his censer, and put incense on them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, thou also, and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire on the, in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourself from among this congregation, that I may consume them in one moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto them, excuse me, he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sin. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And every one on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tent, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. Hmm. But if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. Now, if you wonder what that looks like, think of some of them sinkholes you see online or on TV. Yeah. <laughs> And instead of a car going down, these are people going down in them. And their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Mm -hmm. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit. And the earth closed upon them. And they perished from among the congregation. Talk about being buried alive. Whoa. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. Oh, they, they booked. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter them, excuse me, scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hollowed, uh, holy. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord. Therefore they are hollowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And it, it, excuse me, and Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they made broad plates for a covering of the altar to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aaron, 
come near the, to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not a core as Korah and as his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. They can't seem to get, as Pat Stu says, they can't seem to get enough. Now they just got through seeing what God did to people that rise up against his his anointed. And they're still flapping at the jibs. Boy, I'm telling you, they were dumb batch. <laughs> okay, back to the word. <laughs> okay. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation and behold, the cloud covered it. And the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire thereon from off the altar and put, an in, put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people, and he put on incense and made an atonement for the people, and he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. <sighs> Open mouth. This Pat Love now. Pat two cents. Open mouth. <sighs> Insert foot. Okay. Now they that died in the plague were fourteen. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not fourteen. Fourteen thousand and seven hundred. Beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Now, can you imagine? You don't want to get on God's bad side. I'm telling you, don't 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 fight against His anointed. Don't fight against His people. You know, let me tell you something. I know a woman who cheated her brother out of an inheritance. Never apologized. Never tried to make up for it. And her brother was handicapped on an extremely low fixed income. And she knew how badly he needed money. Now they were like, like nip and tuck all the time they grew up. But then he made a decision she didn't agree with. So I guess she decided, well, he ain't getting none of his money. Well. He chose to handle it God's way. He kept his flap shut. He prayed about it. I know this man. He prayed about it. And he cried at the altar for God to give him the ability to forgive his sister. He cried many a times until it was finally complete. And there were times she'd end up in the hospital and he would go and visit her. And he never brought it up. He never talked about it. And I mean, this was like almost a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of an inheritance. And he left it alone. He left it in God's hands. He ended up having a very happy marriage. Okay? He was already married at the time. But he had a happy marriage. And someone that really looked after him. And the sister just steadily declined and got worse and worse and worse. She had an amputate 
and and, and uh, one amputation, then another amputation, and one complication, another complication. By the time they saw her, they couldn't even hardly recognize who she was. She looked so different. And you could see that she was right at death's door. But God didn't let her die. He just kept her around to suffer a little more. And when she finally did pass away, there was nothing left for her brother. She had played it away, spent it up, whatever. Nothing left for him. But God blessed the brother with a beautiful life in spite of his handicap because he had someone that truly loved him. Story number two. A man told me about a woman he knew. She was a Spanish lady that took care of both her parents. And she grew up being treated like the butt end of every joke in her family. She was the rejected one. She was the one who uh, nobody really, you know, thought much of. The parents appreciated her. But her brothers and sisters treated her like, like dirt under their feet. When daddy got sick, she was there for him. Mama Sita got sick, she was there for her. So they decided, okay, what we're going to do, they went to a lawyer and they said, you know, our kids are going to expect all this inheritance. They had land, property, houses, all kind of stuff. And the attorney said, do this. If you want your daughter to have everything, you have to give your, your sons and daughters something to stop them. Give them each will to them one dollar a piece. And then give everything that you want to give to your daughter. And that's what they did. And even though the daughter didn't open her mouth and defend herself, she didn't fight back. She just minded her business and took care of her parents. And she suffered financially a lot of times while making that sacrifice. But when it was all said and done and they both had passed away, girlfriend laughed all the way to the bank. She cried for her parents. But she had a wonderful life after that. She never had to want for a thing. It pays to trust God. You've got to believe that God really has your back, that he really has your best interest at heart. You do it God's way. You forgive you may not want to hug, kissy, and all that stuff, but you forgive. I mean, you totally release that thing. So it's not gnawing at you day in and day out. You're not thinking about no. You're totally releasing it into God's hands. And you ask God to vindicate you and watch what happens. It may take a few years now. So you got to be patient and you have to trust. But you trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And let God show everybody whose side he's on. You hear me? The battle is the Lord's now. You take your boxing gloves off. You close your mouth. And the only time you open it, you open it to the Lord. You cry to him. And let him wipe your tears because payday is coming, baby. And you're going to be laughing all the way. God bless you here. Amen.